Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition. Today we are on page number 599. We'll pick up from where we left off last time. Make sure the book is always in front of you. Turn to page number 559, problem number one. Section number four, problem number one. And as you already know, in the first, in the beginning, the first few problems are going to be quite straightforward. Here's number one. It says that one pound cost two dollars. The question is, how many will C pound cost? Well, if one pound costs two dollars, therefore C pound should cost two times C. Obviously, simple enough. Number two. In number two, we are given a graph with five different segments which looks something like this. There are five different segments. It rises, then it falls, then it rises again, then it falls, and then rises one more time. Now I did not do a good job here of showing what I need to show here. Let me redraw it. So it rises. Then it falls, then it rises, and then it falls, and there you go. This is much better. One, two, three, four, and five. The question simply is, the sharpest drop occurs between which period? One, two, three, four, and five. Well, the first thing we notice is that there are only, this is too much explanation for number two, I know that. There are only two uh, intervals where it drops. One is right here, and one is right here. And I hope, even though mine is not a very good job, but actually it looks almost parallel. But it is a little bit sharper, this is, this is steeper. That's a steeper segment compared to this one. Or at least it is in the book. Don't look at my graph, look at the book. So the question is, where does the sharpest drop occur? The answer is between 3 and 4. Between 3 and 4. Where does the sharpest drop occur? The answer is between three, 3 and 4. Or to be more precise, proper grammar would be because there are only two of them, it should not be sharpest, it's not superlative, it's actually sharper because there are only two of them. That's number 3. As you found as we, have, as we have found time and time again, when you try to explain too much for something very simple, it gets very annoying. In number three, we are, we, have a, we are told that we have three defective parts out of every 200. The question is, how many defective parts can we expect to have out of 100,000? Set it up as a proportion problem, always a straight idea, simple idea. Defective over total. And it says, let me read this thing exactly how it's phrased in the problem. It says in a sample of 200 cars, in a sample of 200 cars, three were found to have defects. Question is at this rate, how many can we expect to find out of 10,000, not 100,000? I misspoke. Just give me one second, I just dropped something. There we go. It was my clip, and if I don't put it back in my book, the pages are going to fly all over my, my fan is on. All right, number three. There we go. So we have three, three out of 200. The question is, how many can we expect to find out of 10,000? Not 100,000, I misspoke earlier. So let's show you. Just bring the 10,000 there and that's what it is. X will be by itself. Just bring the 10,000 there. So X is going to be equal to three times 10,000, which I'm going to write that as 100 times 100. 100 times 100 is 10,000. I want to write 10,000 100 times 100 because at the bottom we have 200. It will make it easier to, it will make it easier to take care of it. Let's divide top and bottom by 100, so we get 2 here. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, we get 50 here. Just 3 times 50, 
3 times 3 times 50 is 150. 150 is the answer, which is answer choice A. Let's look at number 4. In number 4, in number 4 we have a scatter plot that looks something like this. Start somewhere here with the intercept, rises up, and the question here is if w is equal to 19, which is shown here, the width is shown here, and the length is shown here, if w is equal to 19, how much do we expect l to be? What's the predicted value of length uh, based on the given scatter, scatter plot, which I'm not going to obviously put on the blackboard, it will take forever. So, let's look at 19, where 19 is. And as you look at the graph, you'll find that the graph actually, the last entry that they have is at 18. Last entry, as it appears in the graph, is 18. They're asking for 19. And as you go up in the 18, and as we move, move up here, and if you, look, if you look at the graph carefully at 18, you will find that as you move up, I'm looking at it right now, it falls between 50 and 55. Between 50 and 55. And if you go up to 19 also, if you move up to 19, you will also see that it does not go above, above 55. So the length, of the length of the L is somewhere between, L is going to be, going to be between 50 and 55. It's very difficult to tell exactly what from the graph, but we know it's not going to go above 55. So look for one answer choice that falls between 50 and 55. And that's answer choice C, 52.83. Answer is not D, answer is definitely not D, because D says 55 to 7. And as I told you, it definitely, it definitely does not go above 55, and it's most certainly, and it most certainly is not 21 or 31. That's all it is. Number five. In number five, we are told that the line L is parallel to M. There is M, there is L, M, L, and we are given something like this. This is X we are told, this is Y, and this is Z. They further go on to tell us, did I do it correctly? Yes. They further go on to tell us in, in the problem itself that y is equal to 20. y is equal to 20. So let's put a 20 here. We are further told that z is equal to 60. z is equal to 60. The question simply is how much is x? And the concept that they're, that they're, that they're trying to test here is the fact that if the two lines are parallel, if the two lines are parallel, which they are here, M, M and L, if they are parallel, then whatever this angle is, this angle is the same, they are equal. And this angle we know is 20, it is 20 right here, which means this angle is also 20. There you go, we are, we are done. We want to find out the value of X, we are done. This is 20, this is 60, 20 plus 2, 60 is 80, therefore this must be 100. X must be 100, because of course they have to add up to 180. This triangle that you see on the top has to add up to 180. This is 20 because this is 20, that's 60. Number 6. In number 6, we are told that we are we have two types of tickets. We're going to relate, we're going to relate B. Letter B represents the number of bench tickets. We're going to rep rep use the letter L to represent the number of lawn tickets. We are told that B costs $75 each and lawn ticket costs $40 each. If, you, if you're willing to sit on the lawn, you can only pay $40 to watch the, watch the game. 
if you want to sit on the bench you have to pay $75. We are further told that the total of 350 tickets were sold. And the total sales were total sales were 19,250. So let's find out, shall we? So here's the first equation. We, we were told the total of 350 tickets were sold. And if B represents the number of bench tickets and L represents the number of loan tickets, then B plus L must equal 350. That alone, that, are, that alone should enable us to get rid of some answer choices because we're looking for, we're looking for, there you go, we can cross out answer choice C. We're looking for the correct pair of equation. Answer choice C is ridiculous. It says B plus L is not, that's wrong. The second equation comes from the fact that the total has to be, total amount of, Total amount that we sold was 19,050. Let's put it on the top. So, if we're selling, if we're selling B tickets, $75 each, which means 75 times B, and if we're selling L number of tickets, $40 each, which means 40 times L, and the total sales were 19,000, 19,250. That's our second equation. So those are the two equations we're looking for. B plus L has to equal to 350. And the total sale has to be, our total number of tickets has to be 350. And that works out to be answer choice D. Answer choice D. Okay. That is correct. That's all there is. Okay, let's move on then. What is wrong between B and D, uh, between C and D, is that they got the wrong. Oh, C we already crossed out. Never mind. Let's just drop it. Between B and D is that they got the wrong prices. The bench ticket cost seventy-five dollars, and the loan are the ones that are cheaper. So that's the answer. Answer is D. Number seven. Number seven says. Which one has, which one has a slope of 3? There's a A, Y is equal to 1 third X, B says Y is equal to X minus 3, C says Y is equal to 3X plus 2, and D says Y is equal to 6X plus 3. Well, let's just look at all the slopes very easy, very quickly. Here is very straightforward. The slope is one third. We're looking for a slope of three. That's not it. This guy right here has a slope of one. That's not it. There it is, right here. Slope is three, right there. The answer is C. This one has a slope of six. That's not good. Make sure you understand and pay attention. We're looking for the slope of three and not the y-intercept. In which case, you would have narrowed down to two of them, and then after that, only God knows what somebody would do at that point, but we're looking for the slope and not the intercept. 7. Let's look at 8. In 8 we are told that uh, x plus 1 is equal to 2 over x plus 1. And the question is, It says, in the equation above, which of the following is a possible value of x plus 1? Which of the following is a possible value of x plus 1? Well, the easiest and the simplest way is to redefine the variable here. Redefine your variable. Let, let y is equal to x plus 1. This is called redefining the variable. So if we do that, this becomes y over y is equal to 2 over y. And just solve for y. My cross multiply we get y squared is equal to 2 and therefore y is equal to plus or minus root of 2 and y of course is y of course is x plus 1 so the two possible values of x plus 1 that that can have is that x plus 1 could be either positive root 2 or negative root 2 and among the answer choices 
Obviously, we're not going to have both of them. We have one of them, and the answer is B. Positive root 2. That was number 8, and that was also the end of the page. I'm not going to start a new page right now. We'll do that tomorrow, when we, when we meet. We'll pick up from, from the following page, page number 602. Page 602, number 9. If you wish to get hold of me, as I have said many times in the past, you can always send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com and we'll talk. Alright, bye now.